Beginning with this year's elections, voting gets a whole lot easier. Your mailbox is your ballot box. Your ballot packet comes to you in the mail. But only if you're a registered voter. If you need to register or update your address, do it today at elections.hawaii.gov. Look for your free Hawaii elections guide in the newspaper or at these locations statewide. The deadline to register for the general election is October 5th, so don't delay. Hawaii, Hawaii votes, votes by mail. mail. Aloha, I'm Ryan Kalei joined by Yanji Denise. This is Spotlight Hawaii, brought to you by the Office of Election. Again, who reminds you that there is still time to register for the general election again, which is coming up. You saw that deadline of October 5th. If you have not yet registered, make sure you do that. And uh, for more information, of course, you can always head over to the election website for more details and information on deadlines. Of course, uh, this is Spotlight Hawaii, where we sh uh, like to sh shed light on the newsmakers and headline makers in our community. And Yanji, once again, we continue to focus our discussions around COVID-19. That's right, COVID-19 and how, of course, the pandemic intersects with the economy. Today, we have a very special guest. We're joined by Mike McCartney, who is the director of DBED, also the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. He, of course, was the chief of staff for the governor uh, in years past and also served as the president and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. So he has a broad base of knowledge on how we deal with this on an economic level uh, from a tourism standpoint and, of course, from government as well. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Thanks so much for being here with us this morning. And of course, wearing your mask, which is a wonderful statement of solidarity and safety in this pandemic. I wonder if we could center you up a little bit so we can see. Yep, yep. yep. there we go. Oh, mixed up left and right and right and left. <laughs> <laughs> we are hamstrung by the technology, but we're so happy to have you with us. And we want to try to get you center yourself a little bit more. Um, there, there we go. You go. Yeah, so that, you know, the viewers want to see your full face and <laughs> love that the questions are coming in already. Um, we'll start with Keone, which is just a basic, what is the latest? Uh, where do we stand economically right now when we look at, um, you know, these on and off closures basically since uh, the end of March? Uh, how are we doing? Well, I think uh, for Hawaii, uh, we all realize that we're very dependent on our visitor industry. And we all know that because of the virus that's been um, basically shut down, we're at 95% um, decline, maybe 5% visitors are coming in. And so um, that really um, has slowed things down. And so our economy is probably gonna grow at like 12% less than um, what, it, what it was at the, next, at the end of the year. And if you look at all the factors, so, um, you know, Hawaii is going to be one of the last states to recover, according to Moody's analytics that just came out yesterday. You know, when you look at overall, uh, we, we're looking at the case numbers. They continue to go up. There's, you know, we continue to see triple digit cases. Uh, there is some talk that this week we could see more restrictions by the governor and mayor being implemented. Uh, how much would a potential second shutdown, if you will, uh, further impact some of these businesses that are already barely, uh, you know, hanging on? I think when you um, listen to the, the mayor and governor in the conversations and what they're um, uh, striving to look at is, I don't think anyone wants to go to a complete shutdown because there's ways, as Anthony Fauci said, um, to keep things open and do the right thing. So that's why everyone keeps emphasizing um, using masks, um, stay away from those large groups and um, follow all those practices of hygiene. And you know people are gonna have to innovate how they do their business or how they live and make that happen. And I think we're very concerned about small businesses, you know, that have been around for a, a long time. And in a way that's people's jobs and they work so hard at making that happen. And I think it breaks our heart to see some of them have to close or close down. So we're doing everything we can to find that right balance of keeping people safe and making sure we have an economy that can sustain all of us. And it's a very delicate balance. And I think that's what our, our leaders are doing, the mayors and the governor. Um, Richard Saller has a question. How many will move out of Hawaii? Um, as you know, if, if we are indeed, if Moody's is correct and we are the last to recover, surely there will be an exodus of people who need to find jobs. What Are there any projections in terms of how many residents we could lose? I think it's too early yet and we, um, I like to be optimistic and proactive that we don't want people to leave, especially um, um, the younger generation and every everywhere around the country, that population between 18 and 34 
is going to be um, important for anybody's economic recovery. Um, I noticed a couple of days ago in the um, or a week ago in the Wall Street Journal, there was an article about uh, people exiting Silicon Valley. So what I'm hoping is that people can learn how to work from home from here. And um, this is a great place to live. And we have a lot of people who um, are starting to do that now. And so, you know, maybe people don't have to move if we start shifting to working online for people offshore. Because if um, 50, uh, if you make $50,000 a year working offshore, I mean, working in Hawaii, but to someone offshore, that's almost 30 visitors that it replaces. So, you know, I think that Hawaii has always been resilient and it's people. And so, you know, I think that's why everybody's striving to have retraining programs and to look at the community colleges and the schools to help do that while people don't have jobs so they can shift and find alternative sources of income, you know, working from home. So I think Hawaii, um, you know, can position itself that way because I think we have a strong knowledge base. We have a smart population that, that knows um, how to adjust and do things. I think it's in our DNA. You know, when we talk about the recovery efforts, a, part, a large part of that is the CARES money. And Don Schultz is asking, how has the CARES money been distributed? We know that money is continuing to come in. Can you talk a little bit about how that money is being distributed yeah. directly within your department? Um, we had, um, thanks to the federal government and then collaboration with the legislature and the administration, um, we have three big grants. One, um, there's an allocation of $30 million and our first $10 million is going out for uh, training programs to put people who are out of work into new kind of job situation with employers and it's a partnership with the private sector out there and um, these ideas came up from uh, people in the business community supported by the legislature so you'll hear that announcement coming out shortly that we're going to be um, paying people to do that as they retrain and then we have another um, initiative to support the fishing industry which um, I think a lot of people haven't looked at and we want to make sure that it's there when there's a recovery. And then we have a the third initiative um, is through our um, high tech um, entity, uh, HCDC, which is for um, uh, local companies to manufacture um, PPE um, because we're not sure how um, the supply chains are going to be in um, months or years to come. So if people, we can start producing our own material, then that might be a strategic advantage for us. And so the legislature has given us money for that. So we're gonna start implementing that in the weeks and months to come. Uh, Tracy Valenti has a question that I think a lot of us are facing now. How can people work with the virus numbers getting higher? It's, um, you know, until of course the pandemic is under control, it's very hard to welcome visitors back. We're, we're really in this waiting game with the virus and, and, and having that under control. What, what's your take on that? Um, I think that's a delicate balance. Um, um, we're in constant meetings with um, industry leaders, um, with the unions, uh, with the airlines, and um, the governor has challenged us to um, uh, come up with a new destination that is um, one of the leaders in the COVID era. So everyone's putting together um, the most stringent, highest standards of safety protocols. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the bubble concept. And how do we do that? in places and be responsible and maybe start off slow and not um, open it all the way up, but make sure we can do everything from the airport all the way back. And if someone is sick, um, we take care of it as our guests. We wanna make sure that um, employees are safe, residents feel comfortable and our guests uh, feel safe and comfortable. So it's like putting together a whole new uh, visitor industry, but that can help to feed Hawaii. And I think that can provide hope, especially in the short term and so we're working on those internal protocols, operations and standards to ensure that um, we can start opening up safely. And everywhere in the world, I think, is looking at that. And boy, we want to be a leader in that. You know, Mike, you come from a background, of course, of working with uh, the HTA. And now there's a lot of talk, uh, of course, now of redefining what tourism is like yes. in Hawaii, that, that we have this opportunity. We're hearing talks of uh, a better type of guests, a higher clientele. Uh, how does that happen? I mean, how do you sort of make that switch to move Hawaii more towards a, uh, a destination that, you know, is more about the experience and it might cost a little bit more, but uh, that will help to bring those numbers down in terms of the amount of volume? Yes, I think that was always the strategic goal at HTA is how do we um, change the mix? 
to higher spending instead of just get numbers of arrivals. And so you do that through the quality of experience. You put together experiences that are memorable for people that um, are locally based, community oriented, aligned with the culture of people, place and culture, um, the food, the music, the dance, the natural beauty, but you don't wanna be so congested. So you start with the product and um, you know we're re doing our best to reshift the product. And I think that um, you know the higher end um, is willing to pay and do, do that um, because I think it's gonna cost more when you come here you know, to have a safe experience. And I think it'll um, cost more too because you're getting a local person or um, that's giving you an authentic experience. And so um, that I think is gonna naturally um, start taking care of itself. And I see everyone moving that way. And that's part of the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority strategic plan. And so now we have, a, I think the best opportunity to execute and implement that. So tourism is more balanced and diversified. It doesn't rely on just numbers. But we also have to remember when we do that, we're connected to the airline. You can't just do that in a vacuum. You got to find the right balance between air seats and access and, um, you know, uh, hotel rooms or timeshare units. And you can't just um, do one thing without the other. And so it's it's balancing that. And I think Hawaii is always trying to look at um, making sure we have a balanced mutual fund portfolio. So we're not just U.S., West or East. But we also have Japan, um, we also have um, Korea, uh, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, and we have a diversified portfolio like, and, and expand markets like Taiwan. So we don't just rely on one market, but we have to put together a guest experience now that the residents feel comfortable with and the employees feel comfortable with, and then we can invite guests. So I think this is like a rebuilding process an opportunity rather than uh, something I would fear. I think this is one of the most best opportunities we had to kind of redefine the kind of Hawaii we want, but it's not gonna be easy. It'll be hard work and a lot of community conversation that still needs to take place so that we can find the right balance. Can you talk a little bit, you mentioned the airlines. Um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of Hawaiian airlines in this whole um, just sort of puzzle that you're that you're laying out there? Um, just, you know, we had Josh Green on here a while ago and he said that, you know, he was concerned that that if we continue to maintain the closure, the Trans-Pacific closure, that Hawaiian Airlines might not make it. Uh, Peter Ingram is our guest on Wednesday this week, so we're looking forward to speaking with him. The last time he was on here, he did say that the airline was losing over $3 million a day. Obviously, that's not sustainable. Um, please you know, talk a little bit about Hawaiian and why they're so pivotal in this piece. Well, during the last recovery um, in 2008 and 2009, they helped us tremendously by opening up new routes and so did Alaska Airlines and um, Japan and Korean Airlines did a really good job of opening up new routes for us. But Hawaiian is important because they're a hometown carrier, over 7,000 jobs that are locally based. So when you buy a ticket on Hawaiian, um, it goes to pay one of your friends and neighbors and that money circulates in our economy. Number two, and I think even more important from a destination standpoint, um, having an airline with your brand on it is priceless and so the hawaiian islands hawaiian airlines there's no other destination that has that you know you might have alaska airlines but alaska is more than a destination we are a destination and that's priceless so they're important i view them as critical infrastructure for neighbor island travel and moving people back and forth and travel um across the um uh, the pacific so um you know, airline travel is going to be very important for us because it not only brings in visitors, but it, it gives us access to the world. And so Hawaiian, we have, I think we all in Hawaii have an interest in having Hawaiian succeed. Um, Peter has done a great job of, of financially um, ensuring that they'll be safe. Um, he has to make some painful decisions about um, furloughing uh, individuals. He's borrowed money and they're positioning themselves to survive this. And I think that um, they've done everything they can to try to weather the storm so that um, when everyone's ready to come back and, and fly at a, at a much higher rate, um, they'll be ready. And maybe just one thing I'd point out to you, there's a TSA website and it's a count every day of travelers. Maybe I urge people to take a look at that data and see how many people are traveling around the country. So all the airlines around the country and around the world are having um, very um, challenging fiscal problems. and um, the airline industry um, is projecting 
that they will not get back to 2019 levels until um, maybe five years from now. So it's going to be tough for all airlines. So in Hawaii, we have to do our best to support our hometown carrier by working with all the other providers who um, help us and, and are valued and um, ensure that um, access still continues for Hawaii. You know, another question that we had came in from Nadine is asking about the ag industry. Uh, you know, in this terms of talking about economic uh, diversification, ag continues to come up. We know that it was a large part of Hawaii's history. Uh, but realistically, is there any sort of pivot or anything else that can be done to sort of promote the agriculture industry in this time uh, when it seems like technology and more people want those kind of jobs than, you know, maybe working on a farm? How do we get back into helping support the ag industry in this kind of way? Ironically, um, you know, it's markets also, and it's the number of consumers and um, people will buy your product and levels of efficiency. So just as we're starting to ramp up diversified ag, um, many of the hotels and restaurants and uh, all over were buying local food because that's what um, visitors wanted. So on any given day, there are 250,000 visitors staying overnight, spending $50 million a day, every single day. That money is gone now. And ironically, that was buy, they were buying locally produced ag products. And so the ag industry, um, I think, is more under stress than um, we, we know. And it's, I think we have an opportunity to do like diversified ag, especially on Maui. They're working hard to do that. I think it's going to be in value added products. You know, and where are those markets and how do we get them? So jellies because of value added or um, taking cacao and making chocolate, right? That's an ag product. And I see many um, entrepreneurs and farmers starting to do that. And um, we want to support those efforts. And I think um, innovation and technology is going to be the key to successful farming in the future. And so I think when you marry the two, that's one area that I think tag, um, technology and agriculture can meet. And um, one last quick story is we had a conference about a year and a half ago with, of technology individuals and at the convention center and right across the hall was um, the future farmers of America. And, um, you know, I'm urging both of those groups to get together because that's the future and they're in the same building. And I think both ends can help each other and Hawaii can um, find a good niche um, in the ag area. Um, you know, one of the questions that came in earlier was about how many restaurants people think are going to close. We had Sherry uh, from the Chamber of Commerce on here last week, and she was just talking about how the real fabric of our community could really change as we see these mom and pops and, and what makes Hawaii Hawaii close. Do you have any sense of how many businesses are going to not be able to make it, especially if we see a second shutdown that Ryan had referred to earlier? Um. I share the same concerns as um, Sherry Minor from the chamber that um, it is the fabric of Hawaii and people have spent you know, a lifetime um, creating these um, restaurants and businesses and you can't just restart them overnight. And you know, with the virus, you know, they're losing half their visitors, I mean their customers, and then the visitor industry is shutting down. So they're doubly stressed. So um, you know, we want to make sure they stay in place but it's going to be tough for some of them and so that's why i try to you know go there pick up food um you know i go to restaurants and and eat there i feel safe um to many local or, or different restaurants i'm i'm very impressed with the protocols that the owners use and the care they take and um you know it's so you know we got to help support them too in this moment i know there's going to be hopefully some more federal support um so that they can continue going. But, you know, in absence of that, it's um, we got to help support it and keep those things going. And I think I see a lot of people innovating, but it's if they're struggling. They're struggling to um, you know, open up and then the, their costs sometimes are higher than the cost of staying closed. And so they're, you know, I, I give them a lot of credit. And sometimes when I go there, I thank the employees for working because um, I said, if you aren't working, then I, I'm not eating. So thank you. So we got to help each other. You know, we had a question come up a moment ago, and, and it's something that, you know, we wanted to address. And, and that is uh, earlier this month or a few months ago, you know, there, there were members of the Senate that were very vocal in, in their criticism of your department and about you uh, in the way during this time of this economic development and, and moving Hawaii forward during this time. Uh, what is sort of your response to some of the criticism that your department has, has taken during this time? Well, 
first of all, you know, we, we all recognize that this is a crisis and that um, we all have roles and responsibilities. I used to be a senator, so I understand what that role is. And um, it's not my first time running a department. And so I think the key is better communication, common understanding and trust. I think we can both um, work on improving our relationships so we can address the needs of the people. And then there's every once in a while, you know, they have to say um, what maybe they're not comfortable with, with us. And I have to say what I'm not comfortable with them. And in the case that came up was uh, I'm not comfortable in the way um, employees are treated and, and what goes on sometimes behind the scenes. And that's being addressed. And we'll just leave it at that. And I think we all realize that as uh, the people elected or appointed to do a job right now, um, the focus is, you know, how do we help get our economy going again and keeping everyone safe? So, um, you know, there's dynamic tension, but it doesn't have to be, um, it, it should be civil and should be in a work environment where it's professional, where ideas can be shared and we find the best solution. And we realize that everyone has a role. Um, they set the policy and we execute it and just need to make sure that the lines of authority and responsibility stay that way. And um, we work together so we don't have um, disruption, unnecessary disruption. So, um, you know, I think that we all realize we gotta work together for a better Hawaii. You know, there's a lot of back and forth. I'm reading some of the comments now on whether we should stay, stay, you know, sort of half shut down as we are now, do a full shutdown or fully open. Um, I know that's that's very difficult to, you know, from your position to really make that call, but how long can the Kama'aina economy as it is now sustain the businesses that you were just talking about? Um, you know, at some point we have to have the tourists back. So, uh, you know, how much longer can this continue without doing real, uh, even further damage to the economy? It's hard to pick a date or target, but what I do know, I know the governor knows and has said it repeatedly, that uh, we shouldn't open up that economy and then shut it down again. Um, it'll, it'll hurt everyone. And so what we're working on very uh, diligently right now are, are the plans, protocols, procedures, operations uh, to keep um, you know, residents, employees, and visitors safe. And that's gonna be our key to reopening. And then everyone benefits from that because before um, COVID came, there was $19 million a day spent by visitors we had um and that um 19 i mean not 19 50 million dollars a day that was spent by visitors every single day in hawaii and that went into our economy and and that supported over 180,000 to 200,000 jobs and that provided about two billion dollars of state tax revenue and so um it is a single most important thing we can do to try to um, get back our economic health and well-being and i think what it, what we hear people saying too is don't open it up so much that we can't, um, it's disrespectful or it's um, um, trampling over things. So we, this is a reset and I think um, the industry gets this and um, there's community leaders um, get it. And so I think now we're finding that delicate balance that we have to go down. So, you know, right now I think we're gonna come out a report thinking that maybe, you know, November, December, um, trying to look at those kind of realistic dates, but that those aren't official. Um, the governor said no earlier than October, but that doesn't mean, um, as he told us, we can't pilot or protocol some things. And so you see um, different places trying to find um, travel bubbles or start it off slowly to demonstrate that it can work. I think the international market like Japan is one um, important one that maybe we could do it together and um, have a small bubble and, and start to expand it and then show everyone that this is how you do it and then continue to grow from that. So I think it's go slow to go fast. And, um, but we, we see the urgency and you know we know we can't hang on. And so we're hoping also that other relief comes in like federal money. Um, and I think that that will clear its way through. There's a lot of talk about infrastructure, which we need to do. So you look at the other parts of our economy, construction right now is flat, but we can accelerate that with state uh, CIP and, and, and projects, the federal government, um, and there's a lot of infrastructure projects out there from the airport to harbors, to roads, bridges, um, to the sewer systems that can be um, construction projects that provide jobs. Um, and then we have, um, you know, real estate is gonna hurt for a while, but that's one of our biggest G GDP items. 
And so, you know, I think we need to build and continue to support building affordable housing so that um, the young people can stay here. And I think they're our future. And if they start working online, then they're working from home in the place that they love. And so I think there's opportunities for that and we can create those the infrastructure to do that. So Hawaii um, can continue to diversify. So many things to do. So I think the first priority is how do we keep everyone safe so that we can have a functional economy, but it, it can't handle more shutdown. So we all got to do our part to um, keep that from happening. And um, I see us doing that. Um, I don't think anyone wants to shut down all the way because that um, has other ramifications and we don't need to do it that way. Yeah. All right. Well, Sounds like our time is up. A half an hour goes pretty quickly when uh, we have so much to discuss. But uh, Mike McCarter, we thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, start your week with us, giving us an update on uh, some of these efforts that the state is doing. And uh, we hope to maybe have this conversation again in a month or so and just kind of get a pulse of, on where we're at at that time. But thank you again. I just want to thank the people of Hawaii for being patient. And um, the only way forward is together. So I know that's talk, but um, it's just within ourselves and within our small bubbles. And uh, if we do that as a um, family and a community, um, then we, I think our economy uh, can grow and come back. And so it starts there and we just need everyone's help. So we ask for your help in making this happen because government, we're just one piece and we're a facilitative callus, but the people out there who are in the jobs and businesses are really making it work and we gotta support them. So without them, um, government wouldn't be able to function either. Okay, Mike McCartney, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And thank you all of you who have written in your questions. We appreciate those. Uh, as we mentioned, we are going to be having Peter Ingram from Hawaiian Airlines to talk. And that, of course, is a big piece of the economy, as uh, Mike just outlined, that, you know, to bring tourists back, of course, we need our homegrown airline. And how different that is when you buy a ticket from Hawaiian versus another carrier, just because those are 7,000 jobs that are here locally. Um, Hawaiian has experienced some furloughs, so we'll be talking about some of the cuts that they've had to make uh, and where the airline is going forward. Of course, the Trans-Pacific tra Travel Closure uh, is limiting their bottom line tremendously, so we'll be talking about all of that on Wednesday. Yeah, looking forward to that conversation. Uh, and, and again, just sort of highlighting a lot of the different things that uh, we just discussed in this conversation. Again, we encourage all of you to go back and watch uh, any part of the interview, we noticed that there were some questions at the end that we sort of addressed previously. So please go back. All of these videos are continue to be posted on the platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. But uh, in, in talking about what tourism looks like in the future and what Hawaii uh, looks like and how we welcome in a different type of guest, uh, you know, you heard him say it's, it's really about the product itself and redefining that whole entire experience. And that's something that's going to take some time. Uh, as well as it's going to take time to get Hawaii's economy and, and people back in to the levels that we did see. So well, we're talking about a long process here. This is certainly not something that's going to happen overnight and uh, see how things kind of unfold in the next few months that help to determine where we may potentially end up in years to come. Right. And he also outlined that Moody's survey that came out that basically said Hawaii will likely be among the last to recover of all the states just because of our reliance on tourism. So this is quite a long road ahead. We do appreciate, again, all the questions that you asked, um, and we try to get to as many of them as possible. So thank you all for participating in this discussion. Uh, as we mentioned, we've got Peter Ingram coming in on Wednesday, and then next week, uh, the governor will be joining us. Next week, also exciting, we are moving to three days a week, so we'll be joining you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There's so much to talk about that we decided to add a third day. So let us know in the comments who you would like to hear from. Um, the governor has graciously agreed to join us, I believe, every Every Monday, Ryan, uh, in September. So we'll be have we'll be having a lot of discussions with him. That's right. We're looking forward to talking to him as well as uh, hearing who you want to hear from. And again, we will see you right back here on Wednesday when again we'll be talking with Peter Ingram from Hawaiian Airlines. Until then, stay safe, and we'll see you right back here 10:30 on Wednesday. Aloha. Aloha.